go listen now to the President of the United States speaking. Like in my home state of Delaware, where I live in Newcastle County, where I was yesterday in Pennsylvania, because people got vaccinated. They got vaccinated. They don't need a mask when the majority, the vast majority of people got vaccinated. <clears throat> Look, I want to talk about what's really happening, what it means, what it doesn't mean. And what we need to do this week and the months ahead. From the moment I was elected, I said I'd always give it to you straight from the shoulder. And we need some straight talk right now. Because there's a lot of fear and misinformation in the country. And we need to cut through it with facts, with science, with the truth. So, what's really happening today? After months and months of cases going down, we're seeing a spike in COVID cases. They're going up. Why? Because of this new form, this new variant called the Delta variant. This is a much different variant than the one we dealt with previously. It's highly transmissible and it's causing a new wave of cases and those are not vaccinated. Our experts tell me that cases will go up further before they start to come back down. But while cases are on the rise, they're not, we're not likely to see, according to experts, a comparable rise in hospitalizations or deaths in most areas of the country. So you have to ask yourself, why is that? <clears throat> because 164 million Americans are fully vaccinated, including 80% of the most vulnerable, our seniors. So there's a challenge, as you knew there could be. But there's also good news. We've spent the last six months preparing for this possibility. The vaccines are highly effective. We have enough vaccine to, for everyone to get vaccinated. And thanks to the American Rescue Plan <clears throat> and the hard work of the American people, we've administered over 325 million vaccinations doses in the past six months. We have the tools to prevent this new wave of COVID from shutting down our businesses, our schools, our society, as we saw happen last year. I've said from the beginning that we will be guided by the science. So here's what the science tells us. On Tuesday, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, <clears throat> the CDC, announced its new mask recommendation in parts of the country where COVID cases are substantially high, where people didn't get vaccinated which they define as 50 new cases for every 100,000 people in a week. The CDC recommends you wear a mask when you're in public and indoors, like work or in a grocery store. That's true for both the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Why? Because even if you've been fully vaccinated and protected from severe illness from COVID-19, you could have the Delta variant in your system and spread it to someone who isn't vaccinated. We need to wear a mask to protect each other and to stop the rapid spread of this virus as we work to get more people vaccinated. And I hope all Americans who live in areas with substantial or high case rates will follow the mask guidance that's being laid down by the CDC. I certainly will and I have because this is one of those areas in Washington. And at my decision, in my direction, all federal personnel and visitors to federal buildings will have to do the same thing. As I said from the beginning, a mask is not a political statement. <clears throat> it's about protecting yourself and protecting others. Masking is one defense against the spread of COVID-19. But make no mistake, vaccines are the best defense against you getting severely ill from COVID-19. The very best defense. And you want to know how we put this virus behind us? Well, I'll tell you how. We need to get more people vaccinated. Look, and it's important to understand what vaccines do and what they don't do. Put simply, the vaccines are designed to save lives and prevent severe illness. They're highly effective at both. 190 million Americans have had at least one shot. Of that group, about 90% are done now. 
and 10% are waiting for the second shot. To those folks who have one shot, but not the second, go get the second shot. Even if you're overdue for the second shot, it's not too late. Go get the second shot now, now. The bottom line is if you're fully vaccinated, you're highly protected from COVID-19. But I also know that many of you who are vaccinated are concerned about what's called breakthrough cases. Yes, some fully vaccinated people will still test positive and some will show some symptoms of COVID-19. That's expected with almost every vaccine there is for other diseases. But breakthrough cases remain rare and almost all are mild cases. In fact, virtually all hospitalizations and deaths are among the unvaccinated. I also know many of you are wondering if you need a booster shot to add another layer of protection. As of now, my medical advisors say the answer is no. No American needs a booster now. But if the science tells us there's a need for boosters, then that's something we'll do. And we have purchased the supply, all the supply we need to be ready if that was called for. Folks, the truth is, as more people get vaccinated, we are better protected as a nation to continue reopening safely and responsibly. But we are not fully out of the woods yet. Because what is happening in America right now is a pandemic, a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Let me say that again. It's a pandemic of the unvaccinated. There are about 90 million Americans who are eligible to get the shot, but haven't gotten it yet. As I just mentioned, nearly all of the cases, hospitalizations and deaths due to COVID-19 today are from unvaccinated people. Last month, a study showed that over 99% of COVID-19 deaths have been among the unvaccinated, 99%. This is an American tragedy. People are dying and will die who don't have to die. If you're out there unvaccinated, you don't have to die. Read the news. And you'll see stories about unvaccinated patients in hospitals. As they're lying in bed, dying from COVID-19, they're asking, Doc, can I get the vaccine? And the doctors have to say, sorry, it's too late. Right now, too many people are dying. I'm watching someone they love dying and saying, if I just got vaccinated, if I just, it's heartbreaking. And it's complicated even more because it's preventable. America's divided between the majority of eligible people who are vaccinated and those who are not. And I understand that many of you in the majority are frustrated with the consequences of the failure of the minority to get vaccinated. But I want you to know that I'm going to continue to do everything I can to encourage the unvaccinated to get vaccinated. That includes addressing hesitancy and misinformation head on. For example, I know some of you are who are unvaccinated think the development of the vaccine was rushed, therefore, I'm not going to take a chance. As a result, I think it's not safe because it was rushed. I understand. But let me explain. Our top scientists, the National Institute of Health, the NIH, and across the country, got to work applying decades of research. Decades of research. I'm going to repeat that. Decades that had already been done, the research, to develop the COVID-19 vaccine when it hit. In the last six months, more than 325 million doses of the vaccine have been administered in the United States and billions of doses administered around the world. The vaccine was developed and authorized under a Republican administration and it's been distributed and administered under a Democratic administration. The vaccines are safe highly effective. There's nothing political about them. Look at all the people who took a shot at it. They later, we learned a lot of them are already been vaccinated.
From the start, I have to compliment Re Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. He had made it political. He's encouraged people to get vaccinated and continuing to do so. And his state's in pretty good shape. Alabama Republican Governor Kay Ivey recently spoke out to encourage vaccination. And even the commentators on facts who have been belittling this for a long time, some haven't, but many have, are arguing get vaccinated. Look, this is not about red states and blue states. It's literally about life and death. It's about life and death. That's what it's about. You know, and I know people talk about freedom, but I learned growing up in school and from my parents, with freedom comes responsibility. Your decision to be unvaccinated impacts someone else. Unvaccinated people spread the virus. They can fill up our hospitals. And that means if someone else has a heart attack or breaks a hip, there may not be a hospital bed for them. If you're unvaccinated, you put your doctor and nurses at risk. The same frontline essential workers who put their lives on the line over the past year and have gone through hell. Again, with freedom comes responsibility. So please, exercise responsible judgment. Get vaccinated for yourself, for the people you love, for your country. I'm being literal when I say this. As I travel the world almost every day, a foreign leader calls me, asking, can I find his or her country more vaccines? Their people are desperate for vaccines. I'm doing everything to answer those calls. We're sending millions of vaccines to people around the world. But folks, it's an American blessing that we have vaccines for each and every American. We've made it our first and top priority to have available vaccines for every eligible American, and that's never going to change as long as I'm here. And it's a shame. It's just a, such a shame to squander that blessing. That's why after six months of extraordinary work and effort, today I'm laying out additional steps we should be taking to deliver these life-saving vaccines to more Americans. <clears throat> First, we're going to provide more incentives to encourage unvaccinated Americans to get vaccinated. That starts with paid leave to get the shot. We're still hearing that people are unable to get time off from their employer to get vaccinated. Well, this is unacceptable. For some time now, I've said you should be able to get the shot and still get paid. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, the federal government is fully reimbursing any small or medium-sized business that provides workers with paid time off to get vaccinated. Employers, this costs you nothing. If you haven't given employees paid time off, do it now, please. Today, I'm announcing that we're taking this a step further. The federal government will now reimburse those employers to give their staffs, who give their staffs time off, not only to get themselves vaccinated, but also to get their family members vaccinated. That means employers can get reimbursed if they give parents time off with paid time, paid leave, to take their kids or their own parents to get vaccinated. So I'm calling on all employees across the country to give paid time off to get the shot or to help a family member do so. I promise you, it will cost you, the employer, nothing. You'll be reimbursed. Secondly, <clears throat> I'm announcing that we'll continue the work with, to work with states to encourage unvaccinated people to get vaccinated. In February, the grocery store chain Kroger's offered $100 to their associates if they would get vaccinated. And it worked. Vaccination rates move up from 50% to 75% among their employees. States like New Mexico, Ohio, and Colorado are offering similar incentive programs that have helped increase vaccination rates. So today, 
I'm calling on all states and local governments to use funding they have received, including from the American Rescue Plan, to give $100 to anyone who gets fully vaccinated. I know the pain people who get vaccinated might sound unfair to folks who've gotten vaccinated already. But here's the deal. If incentives help us beat this virus, I believe we should use them. We all benefit if we can get more people vaccinated. But in addition to providing incentives to encourage vaccination, it's time to impose requirements on key groups to make sure they're vaccinated. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just this week, we took an important step to protect our veterans. Like many civilian hospital systems are doing, the Department of Veterans Affairs will now require COVID-19 vaccines for doctors and nurses and other health care workers who provide medical care for our veterans. We must do everything possible to protect our veterans from getting COVID when they come to get medical care they so richly earn serving their country. We owe them. Next, since many vaccinations are required for active duty military today, I'm asking the Defense Department to look into how and when they will add COVID-19 to the list of vaccinations our armed forces must get. Our men and women in uniform who protect this country from grave threats should be protected as much as possible from getting COVID-19. I think this is particularly important because our troops serve in places throughout the world, many where vaccination rates are low and disease is prevalent. Next, every federal government employee will be asked to attest to their vaccination status. Anyone who does not attest or is not vaccinated will be required to mask no matter where they work, test one or two times a week to see if they've, acqu they've ac acquired COVID, socially distance, and generally will not be allowed to travel for work. Likewise, today, I'm <clears throat> directing my administration to take steps to apply similar standards to all federal contractors. If you want to do business with the federal government, get your workers vaccinated. Look at the Chamber of Commerce representing tens of thousands of American businesses, the National Association of Manufacturers. The Business Roundtable is comprised of the largest and biggest corporations in America. They're all applauding the actions that the federal government is taking and urge them to follow suit. I also commend the National Football League has announced that if there are outbreaks among unvaccinated players and personnel, then the team risks forfeiting games. I urge other sport leagues at every level, to take every step they can. Every day, more businesses are implementing their own vaccine mandates. And the Justice Department has made it clear that it is legal to require COVID-19 vaccines. We all want our lives to get back to normal. And fully vaccinated workplaces will, will make that happen more quickly and more successfully. We all know that in our gut. With incentives and mandates, we can make a huge difference and save a lot of lives. I also want to speak to families with children in school. We can and we must open schools this fall full time. It's better for our children's mental and emotional well-being, and we can't afford another year out of the classroom. Every school should be open. And we're giving them the tools to be able to do so safely. Even in those areas where they have a higher vaccination, they, they have a higher rate of COVID. Through the American Rescue Plan, we provided schools billions of dollars to implement safety measures, better ventilation, social distancing, and other measures. In March, when vaccinations were scarce, I prioritized teachers and school workers by utilizing our federal pharmacy program. Almost 90% of educators and school staff are now vaccinated. Additionally, the CDC has provided clear guidance on how all schools can safely protect the kids and bring them back to the classroom. Every student wear a mask. It's that simple. 
So we funded safety measures in schools, we vaccinated teachers and staff, and we can mask up our kids for further protection. But once again, there's one more thing we need to do. Get more adolescents, ages 12 and up, vaccinated now that they've been cleared. In the past week, the good news is we've seen the average number of 12 to 17 year olds getting vaccinated go increase 22% per day. Today, I'm asking school, school districts to host one last pop-up vaccination clinic over the coming weeks for kids ages 12 and up. We're directing the federal pharmacy program to help make that happen. Parents, get your children vaccinated. You do it for so many other things right now. For kids under 12, if and when the vaccines are deemed safe for them, we'll be prepared to get the vaccines administered as quickly and as safely as possible. Look, and as we work to vaccinate more Americans, we're prepared for outbreaks in areas where there are unvaccinated people. My administration has made it clear to every governor that more federal resources are available to them. This includes deployment of surge teams composed of experts from the CDC and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, the FEMA. We're going to continue to provide states with more testing, treatments, protective equipment, personnel, mobile vaccination clinics to stem the surge of the virus among the unvaccinated. The pictures of hospitals in several states overloaded with patients is unnecessary, avoidable, and tragic. You know, we'll help any health system overloaded and unable to cope with the spike in cases. We're ready to do that. Let me close with this. If you're at home and vaccinated, but anxious, or even angry, or if you're at home and unvaccinated, unbothered, and unconvinced, let's step back and see where we are. Just remember how we've emerged from a dark winter into a hopeful spring and summer. But really remember just how dark that winter was. Over 3,600 Americans were dying each and every day. And now, even with the surge among the unvaccinated, we're down to that 300 Americans a day. Significant. Millions of people are out of work, out of homes, out of hope and going hungry. Remember those long lines? People in their automobiles waiting for a box of food to be put in their trunk. Experts and pundits said we couldn't get the vaccines. And even if we could get the vaccines, we couldn't get them in people's arms. We couldn't get them vaccinated. They predicted our economy would collapse. But remember how we stayed focused and how we went to work? In six months, we got 164 million Americans fully vaccinated because we vaccinated so many people, put in place so many safety measures, and got economic help to businesses and people most in need. Our economy is recovering. More than 3 million Americans are back to work since I was sworn in. A faster job growth than any previous administration, any. We're experiencing the fastest economic growth in nearly four decades. The best in the world as of now. In fact, today's GDP numbers show that in the first half of the year, our economy grew faster than any point in nearly 40 years. Our economy grew more in six months than most Wall Street forecasters expected for the entire year before we implemented our plan. And just yesterday, we announced a bipartisan infrastructure deal that's going to continue this momentum over the long term by making the most significant investment to rebuild America in nearly a century. But we still have to face many challenges. We still have a lot of work to do as we readjust to a post-pandemic economy. But we have the right plan. We're coming back. We just have to stay ahead of this virus. I know this is hard to hear. I know it's frustrating. I know it's exhausting to think we're still in this fight. And I know 
We hope this would be a simple, straightforward line without problems or new challenges. But that isn't real life. We're coming out of the worst public health crisis in 100 years, the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. As I told you before, I carry a card in my pocket. I hope I have it with me. I have a carry card in my pocket with a number of Americans dead from COVID-19. As of today, this morning, the total deaths in the United States were 609,441. Granted, the death rate per day is way down. It's down to 400 about dead. But that's more deaths than World War I, World War II, Vietnam, 9-11, Iraq, and Afghanistan wars combined. This is as tough as it gets. And we're Americans. When we get knocked down, we get back up. That's who we are. That's what we do. All right, some pretty stunning numbers there at the end. You've been listening to the president of the United States confirm that COVID cases are going up due to this new Delta variant. Therefore, he's mandating all federal personnel and visitors to federal buildings will have to wear a mask. Federal employees will vax or mask. He wants paid leave for employees to get the shot and employers will be reimbursed. He's urging states and localities to give $100 for people to now get vaccinated. And he wants a mandate vaccine for the military. We'll have much more on the new incentives and mandates in our later newscasts. And we're back with more news and weather right after this.